So my name is Tom, I work at Cloudflare. Um, I work in the DNS team. Um, and can I just have a show of hands? Does anyone not know who Cloudflare is? OK, perfect, some people, great. Um, so just a quick, quick introduction of what Cloudflare is and who we are. Um, Cloudflare is essentially a CDN and web security company. Um, and basically, the way our product works is you, instead of um, a, a web a person browsing the internet or someone using an API or something like that, um, talking to your website directly or your web property or API, um, you use Cloudflare as a reverse proxy in the middle. Um, and we provide CDN services and security services and optimizations uh, in the middle um, to uh, provide you. Uh, yeah, basically, you can use this as a CDN, denial of service protection, and a bunch of other things. Um, we have quite a large infrastructure. Um, the, I work in the DNS team. Um, we serve about um, up to 3 million DNS queries per second globally um, from our about just over 100, 110 data centers now. Uh, we call them POPs, uh, points of presence. Um, it's estimated that we see about 10% of, kind of internet browsing traffic globally. Um, we serve a lot of large web properties, um, so we have a lot of data. Um, I work in the DNS team, and I'm going to talk a bit about how we use ClickHouse for real-time uh, DNS analytics. Um, hopefully this is kind of thing is familiar to most people here. Um, this is the output from DIG, which is a command line interface for doing a DNS query. Um, so we, um, we want to basically provide analytic services to customers um, and to ourselves uh, on the, the queries that are coming in. Um, so this is the output from DIG. Uh, you can see that it's a query for Cloudflare.com. Just in this response, there's a bunch of things that we might want to track. Um, so there's things like uh, how many answers there were, uh, how long it took, the IP address, the port. Um, and there are about 30, 35 fields that we want to track internally. Mm -hmm. um, things like performance, uh, which pop it hit, which machine it hit, and so on. Um, so there's a lot of data. Um, there's a mix of numeric data, some flags, some booleans, um, and also some like very, very high cardinality strings, like the query name. Um, so there's a mix of different types of data that we might want to track um, and store with the database system. Um, the end result that we really wanted to get to uh, to start with was a kind of powerful customer analytics. So searching by query name, seeing like aggregate counts of how many uh, queries there were for a particular type, uh, how long it took, which um, pops you're getting queries to, whether your traffic is distributed to a certain region of the world. Um, and this is just a few screenshots of the product that we ended up with. Um, so it's pretty simple, um, but basically it allows us to provide <coughs> like kind of basic statistics to customers that are using our DNS services. Um, so what did we want? When we started looking at um, providing analytics, we already had uh, a somewhat large-scale analytics uh, product for our HTTP traffic. Um, this started to show a bit of a few cracks. So basically, we uh, decided to go shopping for technologies to find something that would work um, uh, at the next kind of level of what Cloudflare Square was to be, um, and it was a bit easier to manage. So there are a few things that we kind of had in our list. Um, the first being um, multi-dimensional query analytics. So um, there are a lot of different fields, and we want to be able to query across all of them. Um, we want to be able to allow customers to filter across different dimensions, um, get performance statistics for different types of things. Um, so it's important that we can kind of aggregate data um, and, and query across all sorts of different fields, other than just counts. Um, so we use things like Prometheus uh, and OpenTSDB, other technologies internally for um, numerical statistics, um, but that kind of didn't really provide us with uh, the kind of public-facing numbers that we could um, we could build a product around because of the cardinality of the things that we were storing. Um, we really wanted to have ad hoc analytics. So um, as well as providing uh, a product to customers, um, it's really useful for us to be able to debug our own infrastructure. So we provide the denial of service attack mitigation product. Um, and when these attacks come in, it's really important that um, when they're large or complex enough that we can't mitigate them automatically, that we can understand what the traffic is doing uh, in real time so that we can then react. And being able to look into queries as they come in is really, really useful. Um, so if we could have an analytics database system that could provide us those tools, that would be, would be really useful. Um, the other thing that's really important for us is late arriving data. Um, so we have over 100 data centers around the world uh, which are generating these logs. Um, and because of uh, the internet is um, a bit slow sometimes, the data from these pops comes in quite late. Whether the pop was out of production or there's some congestion on the network, um, it's important that this data makes its way to us and that we still count it. Um, so a lot of people solve these problems in different ways, um, and we ended up uh, trying a few different technologies, and this was a real core problem for us. Um, the way that we handled it currently wasn't ideal, um, and this is something that we really needed to, to think about. Um, yeah, roll-ups and aggregations as well. We wanted to store this data for a long period of time. Um, we have 
um, over yeah less than three million, uh, depending on what's going on, um, queries per second. That's a lot of data, and it's important that we can store this historically, both for our own purposes and also for customers. Um, and also, it needs to be highly available. Um, we run a big infrastructure; we can't have um, outages causing uh, customers customers problems. So. Um, so we tried a few different things. Um, this list is, I think, possibly even a bit longer, um, but these are the ones that we actively tested. Um, we currently use uh, Kafka mixed with CytosDB. Um, does anyone know what CytosDB is? Is it something that was popular? Yeah, okay. So we currently use Citus um, as a core part of our HTTP analytics infrastructure. Um, and Citus is pretty great, um, but we wanted to explore a few other technologies. Um, I personally have used things like Spark, um, Hadoop, and other big data things before, um, and we also tried a few other systems, um, and then we came across uh, ClickHouse. Um, so ClickHouse has already been mentioned a few times, um, and there's already, there's quite a few talks this week uh, about ClickHouse, and I would seriously urge you to go to them, um, because uh, having seen different database technologies personally, ClickHouse was, uh, I didn't believe it when I saw it from us. Um, so it's pretty great. It's basically a, a tabular <coughs> column in a data store, so um, you have tables, it um, doesn't have relations, but it's a bit, you can use SQL to query it. Um, and it's column oriented, so if you're just selecting one column, it's cheaper than selecting all the columns. Um, it's very familiar, uh, you query it with SQL. So this is really useful because if we wanted to allow uh, people internally to query this data and to, to analyze it, um, using SQL is much easier than uh, using a custom query language. Uh, and it integrates with other tools as well, uh, which is handy. So we currently store um, these raw log entries that we collect um, for three months in the ClickHouse cluster. Um, that equates to about seven trillion rows. Um, and then we store aggregated data now for uh, one minute, five minute, and one hour chunks. Um, and we cross, we store that across three different dimensions. Um, so as I said, we want to be able to show, um, to be able to break down these logs and these aggregates by different dimensions. And we can't store everything, um, so we chose a few small dimensions that would be useful to customers so that we could um, provide it in the long term. Uh, so basically, we managed to get everything we wanted. Um, ClickHouse is a nice distributed system. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to manage, um, and it allows us to run these ad hoc queries um, and also provide nice speedy analytics for customers. So what was the architecture that we ended up with? Something that looks a bit like this. Um, so when traffic comes into Cloudflare, the first thing that happens is a DNS query occurs. Um, that's where we come in. So the DNS query uh, gets run, hits our DNS server, um, we aggregate logs um, per pop, and then we have a system that collects logs from all these different systems and ships them over to TLS um, to the data center that we process them in. Um, that's sort of called Log Forwarder, and it's an open source project. Um, they make their way into Kafka, uh, and then we use Go to insert these logs into ClickHouse, um, and then they make their way into our ClickHouse cluster. Um, so how exactly did we get here? We started looking uh, at to kind of going technology shopping in October of last year. Um, and tried a few different things um, and tried out ClickHouse kind of in November. Um, by the beginning of this year, we had a test ClickHouse cluster up and running in the DNS team, um, <coughs> collecting a sample of traffic, um, and that then scaled up to a much bigger um, cluster for the whole thing. Um, and then we launched a product uh, earlier this year using that system. Um, since then, the rest of Cloudflare has basically jumped on this incredible bandwagon of how great ClickHouse is, um, and has now moved over into our platform team and lots of other teams are using it. Um, so now we run one big multi-tenant cluster of about 30 machines, uh, and we do about 8 million row insertions per second. Um, that doesn't count aggregations because those happen um, inside ClickHouse. Um, so just to give you a very simple, trivial example of how this can be useful, um, this is a graph that someone sent me of some queries um, with a bunch of filters. Um, and there's these interesting spikes. These spikes are actually every five minutes. Um, and we were like, okay, this is interesting, how do you look at that? So a graph like this is pretty easy to generate from uh, something like Prometheus or any kind of metric system. Um, but I can't really tell you exactly why this is happening. Um, with something like ClickHouse and storing all of these raw logs, um, you can just do this and suddenly it allows you to break down all this traffic. Um, this query takes a few seconds um, over our raw logs table, which has several trillion rows in it. Um, and suddenly you can start to see, based on a few different uh, counts and distincts, um, what exactly is going on. So these kinds of tools are incredibly useful, um, and I really can't kind of tell you how to underestimate the value of being able to arbitrarily query this kind of data for debugging. Uh, that's it, I'm doing another session uh, tomorrow afternoon, I believe, uh, in Swift Week 2, apparently, um, where I'll talk a bit more about how we got here um, and some of the problems we ran into. I'll also talk a bit about the other technologies that we tested and why they weren't um, suitable or why we didn't choose to use them. 
um, and maybe a bit more about the infrastructure that we run with Glencast.